Before I bring my friend Randy Cross on, I wonder how many times in practice he was called a bitch. And I, I, I love, hey, I love this though, because fans today are saying, Sills, did you see Dak lost the team? He got called a bitch. I'm like, in helmets and shells, he lost the team? He- Helmet and shells, he lost the team. Do you know how many times I was called a bitch in practice? It's called competing. And some of you out there, there's a reason that more people sit in the stands than are on the field is because that shit goes on when you compete. Let me bring my friend in here, man. I tell you what, hey, Randy, I mean, bottom bottom line here, man. I mean, hey, Dak lost the team, according to Eagle fans today, because he um, he was called a bitch by Diggs. I'm, <laughs> I mean... That's an epiphany for me, though, man. Holy cow! Thanks for doing this, my friend. No, no problem. Yeah, that's a that's groundbreaking material there. You know, he won't be a bitch unless he throws fifteen picks again. Then that's then right. Hey, Randy. Be, then it'll if, be unanimous. Hey, Randy, if he throws five picks against the Giants in the opener, then you're going to hear people going, "He lost the team." <laughs> <laughs> that that dude. I'm so glad you're here because I want to. I said this about Dak Prescott. The year before, Dak throws for 37 touchdowns, 10 picks, 4,500 yards. Last year, obviously not a good year. Had 15 interceptions. And I said this to Eagle fans. You know, we're based in Philly, this and that. And I, and I, and I said this to them. I go, Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. Jalen had a better season. And until we see more of a sample size, there's not a chance in hell you can go like this. Hertz is a better quarterback than Dak. He's eight and three, Randy, in his 11 games versus the Eagles. He's thrown for 70% almost completion percentage. In his worst year a year ago, he threw five touchdowns. Am I right the way I'm looking at it? Or do you look at it differently in how you look at Hertz to Dak? Because I think it's going to come down to those two guys and the 49ers in the conversation for the NFC. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right in that regard. I mean, they you have to start, you know, how, how do you build your team? You build your team to win at home. Dallas is built to win at home. You build your team to win your conference. I mean, your division. Right now, they're not the best team in that division. And I just think based on the performance last year, Dak's not the best quarterback in that division. And that should mo- that should be motivating his ass off. I mean, that should really motivate him um, and stay in there. And equally on the other side, equally, that should really motivate Jalen. Because, and I'm not sure he really, he really needs to be motivated too much because he's had a history of ups and downs and ins and outs. And I, I think the success last year has only motivated him further. I want to ask you a couple 49er questions here because I'm looking at both those teams today if any one of these teams can take down the Eagles and knock them off that perch there as NFC champions. it In your opinion, Brock Purdy, do you think this is fair? He's got to start the season and finish the season for this football team to have a shot to knock off the Eagles as NFC champions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, You know, I, I – thoroughly believe that the best team didn't represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. I think San Francisco is the better team. I think they have the best roster in the NFC. Um, But, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Mainly, the number one thing is injuries. Now, if, if Philly can get through the year and without getting decimated and San Francisco gets a few dings, the Niners are going to struggle. Philly gets some injuries. Dallas doesn't. Dallas is going to come up. You know, Dallas is going to win. Let's say with no injuries, Dallas can win 13, but Philly gets some injuries. That's going to be a, that's going to be a thing. But yeah, I mean, I liked what we saw, you know, out of Brock Purdy last year, but I'm not going to go too crazy. I mean, it's, it's as good as it was. We, we don't know. I mean, it's, it's less than – he's not hasn't – he's barely gotten to double digits as far as games he's been in. So, uh, I'll worry about that when that comes. But, you know, Shit, I, you started I, I more playoff games. Good. You started more playoff games than this guy started games in, in yeah. the NFL. So, 
like like I said about Jalen. So y- you need to see more of a sample size from this guy before you're going to crown this guy the next 49er great guy. Well, he's the best. He's the best one they have. I think I think her, healthy. He's the best quarterback they have. He's he's better than Trey Lance. Um, at some point, that's going to become a problem, given what they gave up to get Trey Lance. But you know how how often do you just luck into a pick like Mister Irrelevant or Brady in the sixth round to go down the list of the free agent guys that have you know had great careers? Will you tell me? Do you think you when you guys when you were early on in San Francisco and you had Steve DeBerg doing really great things there early on, all of a sudden you saw Montana? Did you feel? And did guys in that organization feel you lucked into something that you didn't see that many people around the league didn't see because Joe was a third rounder. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it took all of about one or two practices watching him run that offense. I mean, once you get into pads and you get into camp and you really see what a guy can do, and it's just like watching this kid last year, you saw him do things that offense from a concept standpoint is, is pretty much, you know, they're, they're the Lambo of the NFL. They in Kansas City, in my opinion. They do, they do stuff and they try things that nobody else tries this stuff. Uh, but you get a kid like that and suddenly you put in that offense that can stop on a dime and bang, hit that open guy that a lot of guys don't see. Um, yeah, I, I think he's that kind of special kid, but he's just, you know, it's like I said, it's early, but he's got to keep doing it and he's got to stay healthy. That's, that's the best of all the abilities availability. Do you think this Trey Lance move and this decision? Cause I agree with you. It's not the fact that I think it's a bigger disaster than even rivers. And I'll, cause you gave future up. You, you, you gave three years of future up for this with, kind of like dog years is like six years of your future, almost over a decade you now potentially are putting in danger. Now, could Purdy cover that with finding him? To me, I compare Randy a little bit to what I saw in um, in, in, in Washington. You went after RG3, you got him, but you kind of hedged your bet a bit when you got Cousins that year in the latter round, and it kind of covered the RG3 deal – not to the extent of the treasure chest you gave up, but you still had a functional guy at the position that won your ball games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be something to watch. If you're a if you're a personnel guy or you're, you're a trade kind of person, you like to project things. You watch things go well early on. Somebody's going to get a hell of a deal trying to get Trey Lance. I think this kid could be very good in this league. I think he's got the ability. He can, he can move, he can run, he can throw, he can do all the stuff you need. He really can. But, you know, again, he's got to stay healthy. He, he'd have replaced Jimmy G earlier if he'd have stayed healthy. So, you know, let's not forget about that. So uh, yeah, I left. I, I, I'm curious to see how this is judged down the line. Cause a lot of it's going to have nothing to do with, we, what he cost to get him, it's going to be what are you going to get on the way out? I threw this out too, Randy. I said, as much as I like this kid, th- you can't have Jordan Mason start more downs than Christian McCaffrey this year if San Francisco is going to be completely productive because between Ayuk and Debo and Kittle and, you know, uh, Williams at tackle, I mean, you got a pretty good looking offense there. If you got all the pieces standing up straight here, but to me, McCaffrey's kind of like, okay, if you don't have a good linebackers, no one's going to be able to cover him. He can run in between the tackles. He's got to have a healthy season for them to be able to be a team that can, it can't just be about winning 12 games, right? Randy, it's got to be about winning that NFC title. The the hard thing about having a guy like McCaffrey is is you can't use him too much. You can't, you can't use him up. Because it's, it's pretty tempting to have him co- sort of do everything in the way of running back. I mean, let Debo take a little bit of it. Let some of the other guys get in and take some of his reps. Um, he's, he's unbelievably talented. And, uh, you know, I, I think the problem is at running back, you know it's, it's not a matter of if. 
It's always just a matter of when because they just don't last that long. And when when's that law of diminishing returns going to going to kick in? I love what they've done personnel wise on that team. But like I said, it's a lot of it's out of your control. That's what drives coaches crazy. It's why they've all got gray hair like me and, and, and they all have holes in their stomachs and ulcers and everything else is they can't control it. That nothing, you know, coaches, they love to control everything, but the most important things they got no control over. Absolutely. Give me your take on Kyle Shanahan, please. I mean, you know, as in innovative as he is, the things he does, the, the play calling, I mean, it just falls short. You know, it, it's almost like Marty Schottenheimer stuff a little bit. Now, he's had more success in the postseason. Marty won 200 regular season games, Randy. He's sixth all time. Never had a losing season, but one, I think, in his 25 years of coaching. I mean, he was a really good coach, but... Mm -hmm. It was always like a speed bump somewhere on the way to get to where he needed to, whether it's a fumble here or this and that or a quarterback decision. And you look at the same thing with Kyle. It just seems to be a road bump or a speed bump somewhere that stops this whole thing. Like you said, look at the decision-making on Garoppolo and Lance. Those two things could maybe cost him a Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got the two Super Bowls that, you know, are kind of right now on the resume. They're the, they're the two fart spots on his resume. You know, that under pressure in big games, he's done some things that leave him open for criticism. And until you can get back to that big game and you can, you can rectify that, those, and like, like Marty, that's what you're judged on. And is it fair? No, it's not fair. But, I mean, the whole idea is to get to those big games and when you get your shot, you take advantage of it. I'm going to ask you one last question um, when it comes to NFL and a couple questions on college football um, here. If you had to win one ball game, one football game, 60-minute game, everything's pretty even, would you take Steve Young or Joe Montana? Uh, I'm, I'm a bit prejudiced on that, seeing that that decision won me three Super Bowls. So I'll go with number 16. Even though dual threat, 4-4, four, four, yeah. 40. He, um, look, I mean, hey, I, I'm with you, man. I, I know the I, hey, oh. I know what it's like playing against 16. I get it. I, I, watch, mean, I, I, watch, get it. I watched him do stuff against the Rams and do stuff against the Vikings. and do, I mean, he was unbelievable, Steve, running. Um, it's just, yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> it's just, I, yeah, I, I, and I, he's I, like, dog, he beat Montana, he beat Elway, he beat Marino, Mo Boomer was an MVP, and Ken's going into the Hall of Fame, too. He beat yeah. four Hall of Fame quarterbacks. You know what's so psycho about, about uh, Montana is that 138 QB quarterback rating. Um, he had like no picks in Super Bowls. I think it's 12 touchdowns, no picks. I mean, just being yeah. in a huddle. Did you know, Randy, that last drive in Miami? Did you know you were going 90? Pretty good chance with him back there. Joe, Joe tended to be a little bit of a cheat code, especially, especially when you start a drive like that with everybody. You Didn't know, you get a penalty too? Oh, yeah, I got, I, I got. We're running a screen. I run up, and I run into a linebacker who kind of knocks me back. I'm going out on a screen, and I cut, and I run down the line. I'm past the line of scrimmage, so it's illegal man downfield. So yeah, Reggie Williams is probably going. Damn. <laughs> hey, all right, couple quite okay. I got these teams here. I'm putting my top twenty five in okay. for my AP vote. I got – I'm going to give you just the top the top five here. Georgia, Ohio State, Bama, LSU, Michigan. You think those pretty much are the teams that you're looking at that are going to fight for those semifinal spots? Yeah, pretty much. As long as, as, long as LSU kind of stays on that growth curve. Um, it's, it's the SEC right now. It's the SEC, Michigan, and Ohio State. 
and uh, maybe USC. The Trojans might be a, I wouldn't call them a dark horse because they're way too talented, especially with a Heisman Trophy winner. But they're, they're, they're a possibility to break through there. But right now, S, between Georgia, Alabama, and LSU, I mean, those are probably the three best teams in the country and they're all in the same conference. How do you feel about your alma mater, U, uh, UCLA, going to the Big Ten? I just can't wait until that, uh, that, that, that field hockey with Rutgers and UCLA and they got to fly across the country. And, no, but I, I think it's going to be – it's going to be – overall, it's going to be great. More money, everything else, and the competition. You kidding me? You get to play all those teams all the time? I, I think it's – because I'm a big believer – in that the whole iron sharpens iron and that's it's worked for the big 10 it's worked for sec and it's going to work for ucla and sc man i can't wait for those purdue ucla polo polo events man i mean <laughs> holy cow man Damn, that's, that's that's the first thing i thought of when they announced that i went oh it must, it's got to just be for football and basketball and they went no it's for all sports I went oh yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> Brother, thank you so much as always, man. It's always a privilege to get you on. All right, man. Thank you. You got it. That is Randy Cross, our friend. Owner of three Super Bowls, too, by the way. Love it. All right. Make sure you hit the like button here. Got to continue to tell you about our friends at Hooters now. We start our 35th year of our relationship with the Hooters. And get this. King of Prussia is now the official home of the National Football Show and Big Sills. Our relationship, as I said, goes back 35 years. I mean, you're going to be able to come out, crack a couple cold ones with us, have some boneless wings, have some of your famous items that are on the menu there. King of Prussia, again, for your fantasy football, pre-draft events, make sure you give them a call too. Your preseason football, this is where also Eagle fans go. This is the home, the official home of Philadelphia Eagle fans. So when you go there, you're going to have yourself a fantastic time. Tuesdays at Hooters, buy 10 wings, get 10 boneless wings. And Wednesdays, a 40-year event. It just gets no better than this. 1983, all you can eat. Kids eat for free on Saturdays as always. Make sure you do this too when you get there, man. Try that six item for six bucks deal they have. You get six boneless wings there with it. They're at 240 North Gulf Road in King of Prussia. And when you go to Hooters, make sure you do this. You tell them Big Sills sent you.